Chelsea Football Club is a completely different club since Roman Abramovich has left and Todd Bowley and co have taken over. However, they have sacked another individual that was going to work at the club or worked at the club under Roman Abramovich, Pat Nevin, for comments that were very explosive. And I can't lie to you, I think if they sacked him for these reasons, he deserved to go, even though I think it's very petty. We'll get into it. Gabriel Mascado, or however you pronounce his name, I apologize, my friend. The deal's not done. For Fabrizio Romano comes out and says, it's not done. I don't know why you guys are getting excited for. This is not true. PSG are in the race. And now reports from Brazil are coming out that the 25 million euro bid is not done because the player wouldn't join Chelsea. Yes. And finally, a lot of people took a lot of aggression towards me when I spoke about Noni Madueke, Armando Broya potentially leaving in January, and I said I would give Broya another opportunity, but I think Noni Madueke's days at Chelsea are numbered. I'm going to expand on that, and I'm going to hopefully show you guys what my point of view is before you all attack me. So let's get into it, and let's break this. Welcome down. to the Kafka Zubrato here. I hope you lot enjoyed that intro, because clearly you did, you stayed this far, but you know the running order, you know what we're gonna be talking about, so so two quick things that we need to get out of the way. Number one, I am wearing a cap purely based on the fact that I need a trim and a beard trim. And this hat is protecting you lot from this disaster class of a hair. The way my hair is at the moment is unacceptable for camera. Need a trim ASAP. Secondly, I need you lot to do the admin, right? I want 750 likes on this video. We have not hit that number in four or five videos, so I need you to support the cause by doing it right now. And then in the comments below, let me know what country you guys are watching from. It's a great way for me to know how far and wide the Bratuchi army is growing. And I'm not gonna lie to you, it always gets me gassed because it means a lot. And if you're new and you made it this far, subscribe. Clearly you guys are enjoying what you see. Now let's move on with it. Chelsea Football Club is a different institution under Roman Abramovich. Yes, we're still spending money rigorously, but we're not spending it in a similar fashion. Chelsea under Roman Abramovich spent to win now. Chelsea under Bluco at this moment in time are spending for long-term advancements of the club and more importantly to potentially generate profit out of each one of these players in the future. That's the truth, that's what we've seen the evidence wise and we're technically a mid-table club. Since they've been here we finished 12th and at the moment we're sitting 10th. These are facts, I'm not making anything up. Anyone that's getting sensitive about that, I really think you lot should grow up a little bit. We need to talk about what's happened with Pat Nevin. A lot of you that don't know who Pat Nevin is, go do your research. Pat Nevin used to be a player for Chelsea Football Club. He worked a lot with uh, Chelsea TV and he worked with BBC on the radio. This individual represented Chelsea with the utmost class. When I tell you, when I listen to Pat Nevin, I feel like Pat Nevin represents a lot of what I feel when I watch football. I'm not saying it's correct. I'm not saying it's 100% right. I'm not saying that what he's saying is going to be everyone's cup of tea. But I think Pat Nevin what understands football in a similar way to me. And that's why I would translate to listening to him more. Because when you agree with something, you kind of want to consume more of the content. If you lot didn't like me, you wouldn't be here consuming my content. It's as simple as that. You'd say, who's this waste man with a stupid green hat? Get out of here. I'm not listening to you. Click off the page. Pat Nevin had two massive comments. And it, apparently they were the trigger for Chelsea to sit him down and say, listen, Pat, you're, we no longer need your service. And this is coming from the higher ups. The higher ups think this is unacceptable. And an individual that is employed by a club should not be speaking in this manner about the club's decisions so publicly, especially on different forums. One of the comments was around Mason Mount. Mason Mount was a player that was renegotiating a new deal. We all know this. And Pat Nevin said, look, he doesn't understand why the club's not trying to renew two-time player of the year. And more importantly, he understands when Mason Mount's getting an offer that is lower than what he wants, it's unacceptable. When he sees Raheem Sterling not pulling up trees and he's making ridiculous amounts of money in comparison to what's being offered to Mason Mount. Firstly, Pat, Normally we agree, we don't agree with it. I think Raheem Sterling has earned his contract purely based on the number of trophies won, the number of goals he's put up and the career that he's had. And even the current ability of the player. Mason Mount is nowhere near as lucrative of a career, nor is he of the ability of a Raheem Sterling, nor has he achieved what the individual has achieved. So for me, you were wrong there. Secondly, they're your employers. You can't openly criticize them like that. No matter how you feel, when you're paid by an entity, you need to respect that entity and not put them into disrepute. That's fact of the matter. A lot of you could call him a sellout, call me a, a loser that doesn't want to speak his mind, um, a, a blue and a brown envelope, as people like to call it. 
doesn't matter. You're employed by that entity. You sign a legal document saying you will not put the company into disrepute. You can't do it. Secondly, and I think this is what got him sacked. I will be flabbergasted if Matt Law's article a month after he's left was not real. Uh, Pat Nevin came out with comments about uh, 1 billion spent, 18 months in, expected goals, uh, a high, chances created high, but no results. He basically said everything I say on this channel and got fired. And the, this is why I would never be able to work with the club or link up with the club. Because on this platform, I speak my mind. Evidently, Pat never wanted to speak his mind. Respect to Pat, because like I said on many occasions, he sees football the way I see it. He sees football the way I see it, and I respect him for it. However, he, he got fired, and it's gonna sound really horrible, Rightly so. Are the new owners and the new regime petty about it? I think so. I think they lack self-awareness. If they were self-aware, they'd say, you know what, everything you said is true. At this moment in time, we're not achieving. At this moment in time, yes, the metrics are saying is in a good way. However, they want to run a corporate institution. A corporate institution, nine out of ten times, likes to have a few things in their favour. And when I say that, I mean literally in their favour. Like, the ethos coming out of the club, every employee needs to think the same thing. If they tell you the sky is green, the sky needs to be green. Your mum could tell you, no, Alex, the sky is blue. No, Bowley and Co. told me the sky is green. My club told me the sky is green. The sky is green, people. That's it. You need to go by that logic. And that's the reality of it at this moment. The next story we need to talk about is uh, Gabriel Mascaro. Gabriel Mascaro, as you, if you don't know who he is, go and watch my videos yesterday. I covered it. It's going to be linked at, at the end of the video so you guys get a good debrief of the defense midfielder, type of player, and more importantly, what news broke and how were we at this moment in time lied to? I don't know how to take this. A misinformed by an ex Corinthians player on his show where he actively said the deal was done. He basically went as far as naming Chelsea, naming the Premier League, naming the move, and saying that's the reason he didn't play. This morning, we wake up to reports from Fabrizio Romano saying, this deal is not done. Chelsea haven't even bid yet, which is completely wrong, purely based on the fact that we've had Fabrizio in the past come out and say there is a bid in place. So I don't know whether Fabrizio is trying to save face for Chelsea or whether this is the players camp trying to move this or whether this is Corinthians, but it doesn't make sense. Secondly, Fabrizio said, PSG are heavily interested. Like, Mendes is trying to sell the project. And this is where it gets very interesting for me. Because if you're a player, who do you want to join? You, you see Zaya Emery getting minutes, you see Ugarte getting minutes, and you see an opportunity to break into that midfield in the long term, getting minutes here and there. Playing in La Liga, you'd see Chelsea's project, and in pre Chelsea's project, you got Enzo, Lavia, Caicedo, Ogochokwa, Carnage Kumeka, Santos, and Quesadilla. That is seven players that have been heavily invested into in the last 18 months. Do you fancy yourself to come? And apparently, sources in Brazil now are coming out and saying the deal is not getting done, and it won't be getting done purely based on the fact that Chelsea have invested heavily into midfield. They are not looking to recruit in the midfield position anymore. The players camp are not comfortable with the fact that Chelsea have got so much like competition in that role. There is no pathway. And I agree. Like, what pathway is there? Carney, 22, Enzo, 22, Caicedo, 22, Gallagher, 25, um, what's it called, Ogochokwo, 19, Santos, 18, and then Caicedo, 19. Where is the situation? Like, I don't see the pathway for this kid. We also have Cobham kid. It's not aging well. This whole situation of we're going to promote from the academy is not working well. You're going to fill the academy with imports. You're going to buy players from abroad, you're going to put them into the academy, and then you're going to expect them to fit in. That's what I do. The final piece of news, and this is the one that got a lot of people rattled, and I don't understand why. So, in my head at this moment in time, I think we've got two strikers. We've got Nicholas Jackson and Armando Breuer. I think Armando Breuer is more polished at this moment in time than Nico Jackson in link-up play, in threat in behind, in... Um, manner of runs. I think Jackson is far superior in dribbling. The way Jackson dribble, dribbles with the ball is way above his age. I think Jackson's tenacity whilst dribbling and trying to attempt extravagant things, such as taking multiple people on, is very good and positive for him. That will separate him in the future when he develops. However, People are saying now, let's get Victor Osimhen in, and when we get Victor Osimhen in, we're going to get rid of Armando Breuer. I think 
whilst whilst it would be the financially more stable thing to do, I think it's a wrong decision. I think Broy has got so much talent. I think Broy is a clinical finisher. Like if you look at the way he finishes, if you look at the the way that he gets himself into positions, the build of the man. I think he's a good striker and he's going to develop into a fantastic striker one day. That's just my personal opinion. I don't know what you lot think. So there's an acceptance from Broya that he's going to be a bit part player at this moment in time, but in the long term, he'll break through. The problem here is people are getting angry that I'm not keeping the same energy for Noni Madueke. And I'm going to explain to you why. There are three big reasons why. Number one, Pochettino does not rate him. We have seen this evidence by the lack of minutes where Ian Matson and Mikhail Mudrik are ahead of him in the pecking order. Consistently, Noni Madueke is not playing. So Noni's development is getting stagnated not only from Chelsea, but just from the lack of minutes in general. It's not good for Noni Madueke to sit on the bench. Number two, Noni's uh, situation is bad luck. Noni came into the club under a regime where he basically had to prove himself. He'd done very well under Frank Lampard. He was ahead of Mudrik. But then he got injured at the U21 when Poch came in. And Poch, who knows him already from Spurs, labelled him to get back to full fitness, slowly like drip feed him some minute. And even then, he doesn't trust him. That's another sign of you were injured and I don't trust you to come back into the team. He's already playing catch up. And finally, the biggest one may have lost faith in Noni for disciplinary issues. People will say, Alex, it was one night in a club. Guys, stuff like this is massive when you're a manager. I can't trust you on your day off, the night before training, not to go out. I can't trust you to do this. I can't trust you to do that. Sometimes when you mess up once or twice, one time is enough for you to lose trust permanently for a manager. And Poch most probably is sitting there and think, are you good enough of a player for me to risk you setting a precedent that it's okay to go out? And the reality is, I don't think Noni is at this current iteration. Chelsea need to move off Noni. I don't care whether it's now, whether it's in the summer. Noni Madueke is not Chelsea quality at this moment in time. I think there's a good player in Noni, but he needs to develop. He needs to learn the game. He is not at this moment in time articulate enough in the way he plays. For example, Noni's excellent at coming in on his left foot, but that's all he wants to do. He'll never go down the byline, and when he does, he wants to use his left foot. He doesn't know how to vary a ball up his game. He doesn't know how to vary his game, whether he's going down the right, down the left, or sometimes go back. Noni sometimes doesn't even use his pace and athleticism to beat the fullback. He's very keen on opening up the play and playing the more difficult parts rather than the simple one. The game's not simplified for him yet. And that's not his fault, he just needs more reps. But it is what it is, I hope you lot enjoyed today's video. I hope you understand that me wanting Noni to leave is nothing to do with Noni being a bad player. It's more so I want Noni to go and develop somewhere else and have a long, illustrious career. That's just my personal opinion. I think he's too good to be sitting on the bench and being fifth choice option. But that's just my opinion. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts, peeps. Peace out, I'm out.